All right, so um, we've kind of learned two lessons here. Let's kind of summarize this. Which way is this object moving? Which way is this object moving? Again, I hope that after every problem you're pausing the video so you can come up with an answer. Which way is this object moving? We can't tell. The acceleration doesn't tell you which way you're moving. However, if we, have, if we keep accelerating in the same way, if we keep accelerating this way, we know that eventually we will have to be moving to the left. Even if we're not moving to the left right now, if we keep accelerating to the left, eventually the velocity will be to the left. So the acceleration vector does not tell you which way you're moving right now, but it does tell you which way you'll, you will eventually move if you keep accelerating in that same direction. It's maybe a little complicated. I'll say that again. The acceleration vector doesn't tell you which way you're moving right now, but the acceleration vector does tell you which way you will eventually be moving if you keep accelerating in that direction. Okay, that's an important idea. Uh, maybe that's a little bit complicated though, so let me emphasize what's most important. What's most important is the acceleration doesn't tell you which way you're moving right now. If you only remember one thing from this portion of the video, that would be a good thing. The acceleration does not tell you which way you're moving right now, because that's the velocity's job. I'd like to say a word about the word deceleration. decelerate or deceleration. And what I'd like to say is that in physics, you should not use this word. Do not use the word decelerate or deceleration in physics. This is a confusing word in physics. We're better off not using it. Um, now, of course, something that's decelerating is slowing down. But don't say it's decelerating. Just say it's slowing down. If something is slowing down, we'll just say that it is slowing down. Um, uh, we're not going to say that it's decelerating. By the way, let me remind you that if something is slowing down, that does not necessarily mean it has a negative acceleration. That just depends on what we chose as our positive direction. Um, but again, um, uh, if something is decelerating, we're not going to say it's decelerating. We're just going to say that it's slowing down. Um, so if something is uh, slowing down, in fact, we would... Uh, so. So, is this object accelerating? Uh, in physics, we kind of would say that this is accelerating, or at least we would say it has an acceleration. Even though this object is slowing down, even though this object is slowing down, in physics, we would say that it has an acceleration. It just has an acceleration that's opposite to the velocity. Maybe that's uh, a little bit weird, but in physics, uh, we say that something has an acceleration if it's speeding up or slowing down. In physics, we say that something has an acceleration if it's speeding up or slowing down. The only time it wouldn't have any acceleration is if it's going at constant speed. Right now, I'm just talking about one-dimensional motion. It's a little bit more complicated than two-dimensional motion. But in one-dimensional motion, the only time we would say that something has no acceleration is when it's moving at constant speed. If it's speeding up, we would say it has an acceleration. And if it's slowing down, it also has an acceleration. It just has an acceleration that's opposite to the velocity. That actually is pretty natural sounding, right? This object does have an acceleration. It's just that the acceleration is opposite um, to the velocity. Um, it's just going to confuse us then uh, to try to say that this has a deceleration. That, that's not a useful term in physics. So do not describe this situation by saying that this object has a deceleration or is decelerating. That, that's not too useful. Instead, you should say this object has an acceleration that is anti-parallel to the velocity. Or you could just say it's slowing down. All right, we just went over some very important ideas about velocity and acceleration and the relationship between velocity and acceleration. Remember again that some of the stuff we said is just for one-dimensional motion. Um, in two-dimensional motion, the relationship is a little bit more complicated between velocity and acceleration. But in any type of motion, the acceleration does not tell you which way you're moving. No matter what type of motion, the acceleration does not tell you which way you're moving. That's the velocity's job. All right, now, one reason why we went over that, that information is because it's going to be important to us when we work through kinematics. There's some kinematics problems that are hard to get right if you don't really understand the relationship between velocity and acceleration. Uh, but a more important reason why we went over that information is just because it's just really important in physics. 
Um, it, it's one of the most important lessons to take from a physics class, the difference between velocity and uh, acceleration. It's going to be important to you throughout your class. Um, so I really encourage you now um, to now, before you go on, just re-watch and redo this last portion of the videos. Unless everything I said to you was um, already something you already knew very well ahead of time, if you feel you learned anything in this last portion of the videos about the relationship between velocity and acceleration, don't go on. Go back instead and redo that section about the relationship between velocity and acceleration. Um, because this is one of the most important things that your physics course has to teach you um, about what the concept of acceleration is and how it's different from the velocity. Don't, don't proceed unless you feel pretty comfortable with those ideas. Not just because they're important for kinematics, but because they're important for any understanding of what we're doing when we do physics. One more thing I might say is that even though what we're talking about here is really important, um, I'm going to just be a little bit philosophical for a second, in a way we haven't actually done any science about the real world here. I haven't told you anything about how the real world behaves. Nothing I've said so far is based on experiments. Nothing I've done so far is based on experiments. Uh, instead, I've just been really just giving you a definition. I'm really just giving you the definition of acceleration. I've been telling you that the acceleration doesn't tell you which way you're moving. Um, why doesn't it tell you that? Well, just because by definition, that's not what it tells you. I'm just trying to give you what a physicist's definition of is, is of acceleration. Well, by definition, the acceleration does not tell you which way you're moving. In one dimension, it just tells you whether you're speeding up or slowing down. So again, nothing that we've talked about is science, in a sense. We haven't been looking at um, anything we learned from experiments, just definitions. Uh, but it's interesting um, that um, without really understanding this definition, it's really hard to learn anything from your experiments or even do the right um, experiments. Um, and a big breakthrough in physics um, has come about um, just because people became clearer about the definition of acceleration and clearer in their mind about how acceleration is different from velocity. So this is an example kind of of how we can make progress in science um, even without doing an experiment, just be, by being clear in our mind about the concepts. Only when we're clear in our mind about the concept of acceleration can we even learn much from our experiments or even know which experiments to do. Okay, I hope you'll forgive me for just a little bit of science philosophy there. Uh, on the same topic, I might mention um, that this whole series of videos on um, general um, one-dimensional motion is really, um, in a sense, not science. Um, it's just a matter of making clear definitions and then doing some math on those definitions. Um, remember that in these videos, we're not going to talk specifically about projectile motion or free fall. Um, that's going to be my next series of videos. In these videos, we're just talking about general constant acceleration motion. Nothing that I'm going to talk about here really depends very much on experiments. Um, it's all basically coming just from being clear in our mind about the mathematical definitions of velocity and acceleration. Uh, but again, that's really just a little bit of philosophy that we don't really need uh, to think too deeply about as we're going through, this, uh, uh, through the videos.